all is stripped away And I simply come Longing just to bring Something that's a word That would bless your heart I'll bring you more than a song For a song in itself Is not what you had required You search much deeper within Through the way things appear you're looking into my heart I'm coming back to the heart of worship And it's all about you It's all about you, Jesus I'm sorry, Lord, for the thing I've made it When it's all about you all about you, Jesus. King of Endless. King of Endless words. No one could express how much you deserve. Though I'm weak and poor. But all I have is yours, every single breath. I'll bring you more than a song, for a song in itself is not what you have required. You search, you search much deeper within, through the way things appear. You're looking into my heart yeah. I'm coming back to the heart of worship And it's all about you It's all about you, Jesus I'm sorry, Lord, for the thing I made it And it's all about all about you, Jesus. I'm coming back to the heart of worship. It's all about you. It's all about you, Jesus. I'm sorry, Lord, for the thing I made it. Cause it's all about you. It's all about you. Jesus. Thank you, Father. Bring you more than a song, Lord. I'll bring you more than a song. I'll bring, I'll bring you more. I'll bring you more than a song. I'll bring you more than a song. I'll bring you more than a song, Jesus. I'll bring you more than a song. We'll bring you more than a song. I'll bring you more than a song. You deserve more than a song, Lord. I'll bring you more than a song. One more time. I'll bring you more than a song. I'll bring you more than a song. I'll bring you, Lord. I'll bring you more than a song. Oh, Lord, we're coming back. I'm coming back to the heart of worship. And it's all about you. It's all about you, Jesus. I'm sorry, love, for the thing I made it When it's all about you It's all about you, Jesus. The heart of worship. We're calling back to the heart of worship And 
It's all about you. It's all about you, Jesus. I'm sorry, Lord, for the thing I made it. When it's all about you, it's all about you, Jesus. It's all about you, Jesus. It's all about you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father, for your goodness. Thank you, Father, for your mercy. I love you, Lord, for your mercy never fails me. All my day, I've been held in your hand. From the moment that I wake up, Till I lay my head Oh, I'm gonna sing Of the goodness of God Oh, my day And all my life you have been faithful All my life All my life you have been so So Of the goodness of God, I love your voice. You have led me through the fire and the darkest night. You are close like no other. I've known you as a father. I've known you as a friend, and I have lived in the goodness of God all my life. Cause all my life you have been faithful, and all my life, and all my life you have been so.
about that Jesus Messiah Messiah for unto us a child is born unto us a son is given and the government will be upon his shoulder and his name will be called wonderful counselor mighty God everlasting father prince of peace and of the increase of his government and peace there will be no end upon the throne of David and over his kingdom to order it and establish it with judgment and justice from that time forward, even forever. And the zeal of the Lord of hosts will perform this. Father, we just thank you, Lord, for... Father God, for giving your son. As whosoever shall believe on him shall not perish, but have everlasting life. think about the time when the Lord came into my life and it was like a behold the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world came to us he came to us Lord we just worship you we magnify you we thank you for your word it is health and life to us we thank you for our hearts are prepared to receive your word we thank you for it right now our ears are open to hear your word Help our eyes to see truth. Help our hearts to understand what you have in store for us. And we thank you for the Holy Spirit given to us, to wisdom and revelation and the knowledge of you. We thank you for it right now in the name above all names. And we thank you for our minister this morning. Father, we thank you anoint the lips of Pastor Peter as he speaks your word. Lord God, I thank you for power this morning to break the yokes, to remove burdens. Father God, I thank you we, we leave here changed this morning in Jesus' name. Conformed more into your likeness of the living God. In the name above all names, in the name of Jesus, amen. Praise the Lord. God bless you, family. This morning, we wide awake? Yes. Praise the Lord. That's encouraging. <laughs> this is not really me being up here. <laughs> I'm tall enough anyway. Praise the Lord. <laughs> well, Pastor Barry's already prayed, so get into it. I kind of walked into this building this morning by faith this morning, <laughs> and uh, just in the worship time there, I felt his presence. The Lord's here. There's an anointing in this house for a purpose. And we have a responsibility. When we call Jesus Lord, we, that must not be just lip service. There's, a, there's an anointing on this house for a purpose. There always has been. This, this house was founded that way. This, um, this word here, it was a uh, prophetic word from a man by the name of Graham Cook. It just came to my mind again this morning. I think I might have read it out a little while back here as well. It says this, and it's a word I believe, that it's not only for me, but it's for all of us. God has not called us to what seems possible, reasonable, or normally attainable. He has called us to do the impossible. He wants us to stretch beyond our ability, our faith, 
and our capacity to reason. He wants us to do more than we could ever imagine or dream. If you are reading this and think that your call is attainable, it's time for an upgrade. <laughs> we are not supposed to be doing what is possible. We are supposed to be doing what is impossible and outrageous. I guess our brother Ray touched on something like that this morning, didn't he? When he was working out in his mind how to look after his finances. To accomplish our calling, we must put our hand in the hand of God, learning to be completely dependent on the Holy Spirit for everything. So actually, I will just say a brief prayer. Lord, I pray that that be me this morning, and I pray indeed it would be all of us this morning as we're here gathered in this assembly. Because we're not here as spectators this morning, we're here as participants. We're here about your business, Lord, and we all are gifted. We all have different callings and, perp and part of your plan and purpose. And I pray, Lord, that you'll be pleased with what you see in us and experience in us. Interesting, we're just singing that song that had these words in it. Um, Jesus, name above all names, Emmanuel. The title of this message this morning is God with us, revealed in us. <coughs> Just last week as we were um, worshipping the Lord here, we were singing that old song, familiar song to some of us older saints, Emmanuel, Emmanuel. God with us, revealed in us, his name is called Emmanuel ties in with the scripture that Pastor Barry just um, quoted uh, about the coming of the Lord. And I was thinking about that as we were singing that song and it's, it's like the Lord was stirring my heart. God with us, revealed in us, his name is called Emmanuel. And of course, uh, Pastor Barry has been very much is the teaching and ministry that's been going on has been to do with equipping the saints, equipping us. The, the, the aim is that we, we've been built into a glorious, the glorious church, part of the glorious church for these end times. God with us, revealed in us, his name is called Emmanuel. And I was thinking as we were singing this song, what are we singing? Now, it's an old familiar song, and, uh, and, you know, we could sing it mindlessly in a way. For some of us, we know it so well. I remember when it was in uh, book two of Scripture and Song. I used to know the number, actually. <laughs> it's been so long. A lot of water's gone under the bridge. But think about it. You know, that's a lot to grasp, really. God with us, revealed in us, his name is called Emmanuel. It means a lot. That's a responsibility, isn't it? It's a powerful truth. But it's not really just about can we work this up, can we make this happen? No, it's about humbling ourselves and yielding to him and allowing him to be him through us. I recently heard this quote, and this is relating to how we share with other people, share with those, particularly those that don't know the Lord, but it applies amongst ourselves as well as, as believers, that people don't want to hear about God. They want to hear God. They want to hear what God is saying to them. Because that's what makes the difference. People need an encounter with God. A personal encounter with God. They want to hear the voice of God. And I think many times that's been a problem with some of our young people um, that 
uh, where maybe some of us older ones have been through times where, of revival situations, of moves of God in the past. And some of the younger ones have not always been a part of that uh, in the same way. They've heard our testimonies. They've heard about it all. But they need to experience it for themselves. The law of first mention in the Bible is a very important law. And uh, it's interesting when you look at when God first created mankind. And we, we've read this scripture so many times that we've probably just about worn it off the page. But first, uh, sorry, first Genesis and chapter 20, uh, first Genesis chapter 1. Get it right, Peter. Genesis chapter 1, verse 26. Then God said, Let us make man in our image, according to our likeness, and let them have dominion over the fish of the sea, over the birds of the air, and over the cattle, and over all the earth, and over every creeping thing that creeps on the earth. So God created man in his own image. In the image of God, he created him male and female. He created them. Then God blessed them, and God said to them, Be fruitful and multiply, fill the earth and subdue it. Have dominion over the fish of the sea, over the birds of the air, and over every living thing that moves on the earth. And God said, See, I have given you every herb that yields seed, which is on the face of the earth, and every tree whose fruit yields seed. To you it shall be for food. Also to every beast of the earth, to every bird of the air, and to everything that creeps on the earth, in which there is life. I have given every green herb for food, and it was so. Right at the beginning, God makes human beings in his own image and likeness, and what is the first thing that he does? What's the first thing he does? <laughs> what he provides for our food. The first thing he does is he speaks over Humanity. He, sp he speaks blessing into the lives of humanity. An encounter with God, the first, as they came alive for the first time, the voice of God is speaking to them, speaking into their lives. That's their first encounter with God. The Old Testament saints, it's noted throughout the Old Testament time and time again that God had that people had encounters with God that God came and made himself known or and revealed himself and spoke to people in the Old Testament and uh, I can give you a lot of examples we'll just go to Noah one great example I mean before that God spoke some words to Cain Cain was heading for trouble Unfortunately, Cain didn't take note of what God was saying to him. But uh, we'll go to Genesis chapter 6. And the earth had become corrupt and uh, wickedness was all over the earth. And uh, as we know, horrible things were happening. Even angels were cohabiting with uh, a woman on the earth and uh, unnatural b beings were being born and, uh, and uh, added to that there was violence across the earth um, God had to move and uh, just dis destroy the earth and, and create, uh, bring about a, a new beginning but notice here that in God's dealing with Noah and God said to Noah the end of all flesh has come before me, for the earth is filled with violence through them. And behold, I will destroy them with the earth. Make yourself an ark of gopher wood. Make rooms in the ark. Cover it outside, inside and outside with pitch. And uh, <clears throat> miss a few verses, 21. And you shall take for yourself all f uh, of all food that is eaten, and you shall gather it to yourself, and it shall be food for you and for them. Thus Noah did according to all that God commanded him. So he was, um, did I miss a bit about gathering the animals and things together? But we know the story. Um, God gave 
Noah life-changing instructions to build an ark. And, uh, I mean, this was a, a turning point in human history. There had already been about one and a half thousand years of history up to this point. But now God's going to do something significant, and he speaks. He speaks a significant word to um, bring salvation to the human race through this one family. Not only saving this family, not only saving uh, the animals, um, the, the animal types on the earth, but saving future humanity. Amazing to think that every one of us here, in fact, everyone who walks and breathes on this earth is a descendant of that family. <laughs> Amazing, isn't it? But you think about Noah. That, that word was a, it was a very, uh, it was, you'd have to say it was a vitally important word to him, wouldn't you? He had to take notice of that word. He couldn't just pass it off as ridiculous. I mean, they'd never seen rain. You think about it. The earth up until that point, as we understand it, was uh, the atmosphere, everything was quite different. There was a, uh, a vapour canopy around the, the earth. Uh, the, the plants and that were watered through a, a, a mists and vapours that came up from the earth. Rain was not mentioned until this time. It was a phenomenon that, that hadn't been seen. <clears throat> And here's Noah building an ark out in the middle of the land because God spoke to him. Anyone remember that song of Keith Green's the years ago that uh, he'll take care of the rest, was it was called? You just think about Noah toting his umbrella when there wasn't a cloud in the sky. All his neighbours would laugh at his pet giraffe and they would snicker as he walked past by. But the Lord said, hey Noah, be cool. Just keep building that boat. It's just a matter of time till they see who's going to float. Just keep doing your best and pray that it's blessed. Hey Noah, I'll take care of the rest. I'm the weatherman. We need to hear the voice of God. We need to hear the voice of God. And hopefully when we come to church every time, to these meetings, we're listening for the voice of God. And hopefully... When we are opening our Bibles at home, you do open your Bible at home, don't you? Praise the Lord. <laughs> our spiritual ears are open for the voice of God because the voice of God is very important. Abraham heard the voice of God, Genesis chapter 12, when uh, verse 1, Now the Lord said to Abraham, Abraham, at that point in time. Uh, get out of your country, from your family, and from your father's house to a land that I will show you, and I will make you a great nation. I will bless you and make your name great, and you shall be a blessing. I will bless those who bless you. I will curse the, him who curses you. And in you, all the families of the earth shall be blessed. It's the reason, one of the reasons why we many of our prayer meetings here, we pray for the nation of Israel. We pray for... And because we remember where we came from. By faith, we are all children of Abraham, if we're believers. And we've been blessed. We've been blessed because of the blessing of Abraham. And we need to bless uh, that nation. We need to... Even though many of them are, um, are very secular and don't walk with God... God has still brought that nation about. And the Bible does say that the time will come when all Israel will be saved. So we need to particularly pray for the salvation of the Jewish people, wherever they are. And if we have an opportunity, we come across some in our own nation, because a lot of them come and visit this nation, um, we should use that opportunity to bless them and encourage them. So God speaks to Abraham, and again, a word that he need uh, that was very significant for him. It was life changing, and uh, God speaks to Abraham several times. And I haven't got time to go through it all, but I'm just pointing out how through the Old Testament it was significant that uh, lives were changed, destinies were formed, God's plan of redemption was underway um, throughout the Old Testament as He spoke with people. And, uh, and it was up to them to take notice of what he said. 
uh, Abraham had a son, Isaac, in Genesis chapter 26 and verse 24. God speaks to Isaac. The Lord appeared to him the same night and said, I am the Lord, I am the God of your father Abraham. Do not fear, for I am with you. I will bless you and multiply your descendants for my servant Abraham's sake. And of course, a lot of this, you know, through history, particularly when it began with Abraham, it looked impossible, totally impossible. Just like it, it looked so ridiculous when God spoke to Noah about building a boat and uh, preparing for a flood. Then we have a significant time in the, in the life of Jacob's son, uh, sorry, um, Isaac's son, Jacob. Or if you want to use the Hebrew pr pronunciation, Yaakov. Um, or Israel, yes. Uh, J uh, Genesis chapter 28. Jacob is getting away from his uh, brother Esau because um, things are not too happy between them at the time. In fact, if the uh, other bro could get his hands on him, he might not last very long. So, so anyway, he gets to a place and um, called Bethel and he... Um, He found a stone to place his head on, lay down for the night. And verse 12 of Genesis chapter 28 says, Then he dreamed, and behold, a ladder was set up on the earth, and its top reached to heaven, and there the angels of God were ascending and descending on it. And behold, the Lord stood above it and said, I am the Lord God of Abraham, your father, and the God of Isaac. The land on which you lie I will give to you and your descendants. Also your descendants shall be as the dust of the earth, you shall spread abroad to the west, to the east, to the north, to the south, and in you and in your seed all the families of the earth shall be blessed. Behold, I am with you and will keep you wherever you go and will bring you back to this land, for I will not leave you until I have done what I have spoken to you. Then Jacob awoke from his sleep and said, Surely the Lord is in this place, and I did not know it. And he was afraid and said, How awesome is this place! This is none other than the house of God." This is the gate of heaven. Dramatic encounter with the Lord there. Interesting, actually, that um, you know the debates about <coughs> uh, the land that Israel should occupy at the moment. But the Bible actually says God told Abraham uh, the scope of the land of Israel, and uh, no matter what people say. Israel has a right to that land. It was a covenant promise of God and, the, and they're actually only in a fraction of the boundary of, of, of what is rightfully, what, what God has given to them. And God has the last say. So we must be careful without human reasoning about this whole issue. It's easy to sort of get all sentimental or... Um, get carried away with injustices and all that sort of thing. I mean, God loves the Palestinian people. He loves the Arabs and what have you. He's got a plan for them. He hasn't left them out. He even um, spoke that um, uh, promise over uh, Ishmael when even though Abraham made that fleshly mistake with and uh, and Ishmael came into to being, God still spoke over his life. And God is able to bring what was meant for evil, turn it around and bring good out of it. Amen. Praise the Lord. So, <clears throat> Okay, we could look at others. We could look at Joseph. Uh, Joseph had, a dr had dreams. Genesis chapter thir uh, 37, verse 5. He... he um, Ah, oh, yeah, I'll turn there quickly. Praise the Lord. Genesis 
Genesis chapter 37 and verse 5. So Jacob's son Joseph. Now Joseph had a dream and he told it to his brothers and they hated him even more. So he said to them, Please hear this dream which I have dreamed. There were binding sheaves in the field. Then behold, my sheaf arose and also stood upright. And indeed, your sheaf stood all around and bowed down to my sheaf. And his brothers, his brothers said to him, Shall you indeed reign over us or shall you indeed have dominion over us? And they hated him even more for his dreams and for his words. Then he dreamed still another dream and told it to his brothers. Don't know if that was wise really, but anyway... Look, I have dreamed another dream, and this time the sun, the moon, and the eleven stars bowed down to me. So he told his father and his brothers, and his father rebuked him and said, What is this dream you have dreamed? Shall your mother and I and your brothers indeed come and bow down to the earth before you? And his brothers envied him, but his father kept the matter in mind. Have you ever heard a strong word? about something that made you feel uncomfortable. <laughs> but you went away and thought about it. <laughs> Kept it in mind. I think that's a wise thing to do sometimes. And then, of course, so here's God speaking destiny to Joseph by way of a dream. But it's still an encounter with God. It's a graphic um, encounter where he hears uh, the plan of God and he spoke it out and then of course uh, uh, there's, there's lots of examples God spoke to Joseph in fact uh, I'll go to Genesis 41 Pharaoh had a dream that troubled him and it was about the um, coming, it was in picture language and it was to do with the coming famine that was going to come upon Egypt. But very wise words from Joseph here in verse 16. Because Pharaoh was, Pharaoh was troubled about this dream, he didn't know what it meant. He saw skinny cows and then he saw, uh, sorry, he saw fat cows and then he saw skinny cows. And, um, and he saw um, heads of, of wheat that were healthy and strong, and then he saw um, wizened up wheat. The skinny cows ate the, the, uh, the, there was, um, the skinny cows ate up the fat cows, the wizened up wheat ate up the healthy wheat. What does this mean? But Joseph, um, he comes. Uh, it becomes, uh, Pharaoh becomes aware that there is somebody who has, has the ability to interpret dreams. And so uh, Joseph is brought before him. And verse 16, Joseph answered Pharaoh saying, It is not in me. God will give Pharaoh an answer. And then God shows Joseph what to say and Joseph speaks out the answer. So there is God speaking through one of his servants, giving his word to someone who doesn't know him. And we could go on through the Bible. David heard the Lord speak to him many times. Solomon heard the Lord speak to him. Uh, the Lord spoke to him powerfully when he was dedicating the temple. Elijah, Elisha, Isaiah, Ezekiel, Jeremiah, Daniel, etc., etc. People hearing the voice of God. And you would think with all that heritage of the Old Testament saints that they would be pretty clear that it was important to hear the voice of God and uh, not let other voices get in the way. But the problem happened through the Old Testament eventually that um, too much man-made religion got in the way as time passed. And uh, man added a whole lot of other religiosity and stuff that just clouded the picture. Remember Emmanuel, Emmanuel, God with us, revealed in us. His name is called Emmanuel. What does this mean to us? 
Well, when Jesus came, Emmanuel came, he brought people into a face-to-face -face encounter with God. And you would think, really, or well, from our point of view, reading it in the Bible, you would think that it would have been clear to everybody what they were encountering. And those people, uh, particularly those that were used to going to the synagogues, etc., were used to plenty of teaching. They had the Pharisees, they had the Sadducees, uh, they had lots of teaching going on, religious show and things. But now they encountered something different. I like this account in Mark chapter 1. And verse 21, Mark chapter 1, verse 21. This is just after Jesus calling some of his disciples. It says, Then they went into Capernaum, and immediately on the Sabbath he entered the synagogue and taught. So he's teaching as well. And they were astonished at his teaching. For he taught them as one having authority, not as the scribes. Now there was a man in their synagogue with an unclean spirit, and he cried out, saying, Let us alone, what have we to do with you, Jesus of Nazareth? Did, we, uh, did you come to destroy us? I know who you are, the Holy One of God. But Jesus rebuked him, saying, Be quiet and come out of him. And when the unclean spirit had convulsed and cried out with a loud voice, he came out of him. I mean, that would have been different that, that uh, <laughs> Sabbath day, wouldn't it? A bit of a different meeting. I bet that woke everybody up. And when the unclean spirit had convulsed and cried out with a loud voice, he came out of him. And they were amazed, so that they questioned amongst themselves, saying, What is this? What new doctrine is this? For with authority he commands even the unclean spirits, and they obey him. And immediately his fame spread through all the region around Galilee. Emmanuel, Emmanuel. His name is called Emmanuel. God with us, revealed in us. His name is called Emmanuel. What does that mean to us today? I'll read on. Now as soon as they came out of the synagogue, they entered the house of Simon and Andrew with James and John, but Simon's wife's mother lay sick with a fever and they told him about her at once so he came and took her by the hand and lifted her up and immediately the fever left her and she served them at evening when the sun had set they brought him all who were sick and who were demon possessed and the whole city was gathered together at the door then he healed many who were sick with various diseases and cast out many demons and he did not allow the demons to speak because they knew him. Now in the morning, having risen a long t while before daylight, he went out and departed to a solitary place and there he prayed. And Simon and those who were with him searched for him. When they found him, they said to him, everyone is looking for you. But he said to them, let us go to the next towns that I, that I may preach there also. Because for this purpose I have come forth. And he was preaching in their synagogues throughout all Galilee and casting out demons. Now a leper came to him, imploring him, kneeling down to him and saying to him, If you are willing, you can make me clean. Then Jesus moved with compassion, stretched out his hand and touched him and said to him, I am willing, be cleansed. As soon as he had spoken, immediately the leprosy left him and he was cleansed. And he strictly warned him and sent him away at once and said to him, See that you say nothing to anyone, but go, go your way, show yourself to the priest and offer for your cleansing those things which Moses commanded as a testimony to them. However, he went out and began to proclaim it freely and spread the matter so that Jesus could no longer openly enter the city, but 
was outside in deserted places, and they came to him from every direction. Emmanuel, Emmanuel, his name is called Emmanuel. God with us, revealed in us, his name is called Emmanuel. What does this mean to us today? Well, Jesus' plan wasn't just to do it all himself, was it? And I could take you to the scriptures, but for the sake of time, we'll just mention it. He, um, actually, I'll go to one. Matthew chapter 10. And at this point, he's just focusing on Israel. Matthew chapter 10, verse 1. And when he had called his 12 disciples to him, he gave them power over unclean spirits to cast them out and to heal all kinds of sickness and all kinds of disease. I'll jump down to verse 5. These 12 Jesus sent out and commanded them, saying, Do not go into the way of the Gentiles and do not enter the city of the Samaritans, but go rather to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. And as you go, preach, saying, The kingdom of heaven is at hand. Heal the sick, cleanse the lepers, raise the dead, cast out demons. Freely you have received, freely give. Freely you have received, freely give. I wonder how much we have freely received over the years in this house. I wonder how much we have freely received just recently. Freely you have received, freely give. Jesus didn't come just to do it all himself. He came to multiply himself. And that's the challenge to us. And that, naturally speaking, is impossible. But we have tremendous help. Praise the Lord. So we begin to see this multiplication, well, the disciples were getting involved with it during the ministry of Jesus' physical ministry on the earth. But then uh, we go on through the death and resurrection of Jesus and past the day of Pentecost and we get to another piece of the Bible that we've just about worn off the page in Acts chapter 3. And there's something very interesting here. I've been thinking a lot about the challenging days we're living in. I've been thinking about changes that might come upon us that are happening in this earth already. Think about many things. Think about getting older. Thinking about time, thinking about opportunities. We know this story so well that uh, we won't read the whole thing, but Acts chapter 3, it was the crippled man at the temple porch. He was looking for gifts from people to help support him. And uh, I'll come in at verse 4. Fixing uh, Oh, no, verse 3. Peter and John about to go into the temple. Uh, so they, seeing Peter and John about to go into the temple, he asked them for arms. And fixing his eyes on him with John, Peter said, Look at us. So he gave them his attention, expecting to receive something from them. Then Peter said, Silver and gold I do not have, but what I do have I give you. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, rise up and walk. Then he took him by the hand, lifted him up, and he, uh, he started walking and leaping and praising God, highly excited, obviously. Um, just an incredible miracle happened there. Then the crowd gathers around, and they're amazed at what's happened, and they're looking at Peter and John in amazement. And um, in verse 12, Peter says, Men of Israel, why do you marvel at us? Or why do you look intently at us as though by our own power or godliness we had made this man walk? 
the God of Abraham, Isaac and Jacob, the God of our fathers glorified his servant Jesus, whom you delivered up and denied in the presence of Pilate when he was determined to let him go. But you denied the Holy One, the just, and asked for a murderer to be granted to you and killed the Prince of Life, whom God raised from the dead of which we are witnesses. Now he says this, and his name, through faith in his name, has made this man strong, whom you see and know. Yes, the faith which comes through him has given him this perfect soundness in the presence of you all. Now, we could read that, what Peter said there, and say, well, you know, they had faith. Um, they were sort of like on a special level of faith. But it's interesting to, to look at the note here in the study Bible, what actually was happening here. Listen to this. Healing is by faith in the name of Jesus in the cultural... Oh, sorry, healing is by faith in the name of Jesus. In the cultural setting of the Bible, the name could not be separated from the person bearing that name. And the very name Jesus Christ means anointed saviour. Therefore, Peter is saying that it was the Messiah in all his fullness who healed the man. When he spoke those words, in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, rise up and walk, it was God speaking through his vessel to that man. Rise up and walk. All the authority of the Godhead was speaking through that man as he spoke. What does it mean to be the glorious church? What is the calling upon us in these days? Now I know we're all gifted in different ways and some are going to have a more a, a, an upfront vocal uh, ministry in certain areas. Others are going to be the, the person that's just on the quiet, meets with somebody in need and ministers to them. And nobody knows about what's going on apart from those two. Both are equally important. Both have a very powerful place. We're all gifted in different ways. We've all got abilities in different ways from God. But what we need to recognise is that people need an encounter with God. And we need to be uh, recognise that God will use us many times to bring that encounter with God to, to, to that someone else. So we're all gifted in various ways. So what do we need? Well, obviously, you know, we need to be walking clean. We need to have humility. We need to recognize pride is a deadly killer in, in our walk with God. So we need, to be, we need to know our place. And then Peter was demonstrating that there very clearly. That Peter was demonstrating that, that it's not us. It's God working through us. Having faith, vitally important. Feeding on God's word, that's where faith comes from. Faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. So whether it's reading the scriptures and listening for the voice of God, looking, what, asking, Lord, what are you saying to me? Digging deeper in the word of God. Whether it's um, hearing preaching, However it happens, listening to audio messages or whatever, feeding on God's word, being filled with God's spirit. In fact, that ought to come. We need to be filled with God's spirit so that the spirit of God can really bring the word of God alive to us in revelation. Walking in love, all these things are important. Being yielded and willing and obedient are all important. But I'm just going to say something here in connection with faith. A couple of ingredients just in closing that are very important, I believe. It's having an awareness. And it's amazing how unaware we can be if we're not careful. If we let things become just ordinary and ho-hum and oh, well, this is just the routine we go through, we can miss opportunities just like that. It was kind of funny last night. Um, 
the grandchildren, the, the little girls, they're, they're allowed to get on their tablets for a, a select short time of the day. And uh, been doing other things, the outside stuff and what have you during the day and that. Anyway, got round to the end of the day. They're allowed just a, a, a little while to sit down their tablets. Anyway, dinner became ready. And they were engrossed in these things. And uh, so Jeanette calls out, dinner's ready, girls. No response. So, dinner's ready, girls. No response. And I was there doing something and I said, okay, I'm going to go. I'm going I'm to speak. Uh, well, I think I said I'm going to go and have a growl. But, <laughs> but anyway... Jeanette uh, got me to <clears throat> be sensible about that one. So I went into the lounge and saw them. I walked right up alongside and I said, girls, dinner's ready. I couldn't believe it. They're just absolutely... <laughs> These things ought not to be, to be happening. <laughs> so, so, such things ought not to be done in Israel. Anyway, I... Finally, and the voice got a bit sterner. Can you hear me? And uh, finally got their attention. But you know, we can be like that with God. Mm. The people in Jesus that, that were... I'll just go to this one scripture. I've got several here, but uh, I'll go to this one scripture. Ma Mark chapter 6 and verse 1 to 6. When I find it. Uh, Jesus came to his own country and his disciples followed him. And when the Sabbath had come, he began to teach in the synagogue and many hearing him were astonished, saying, where did this man get these things? And what wisdom is this which is given to him that such mighty works are performed by his hands? Is this not the carpenter, the son of Mary, the brother of James, Joseph, Judas and Simon? And are not his sisters here with us? So they were offended at him. We know this guy, who is he? He's just one of our neighbours. Saw him grow up. But Jesus said to them, A prophet is not without honour except in his own country, among his own relatives and his own house. Now he could do no mighty work there except that he laid his hands on a few sick people and healed them. And he marvelled because of their unbelief. Then he went about the villages in a circuit teaching. And uh, anyway... He carries on, and uh, miracles are happening elsewhere, but they're not happening there. Too familiar with him. They were unaware of who he really was. We need to be careful of that. So having an awareness. I'll just say this, that distractions hinder, hinder sorry, distractions hinder our awareness. Just like the little girls were distracted with their tablets, being preoccupied. And unfortunately, we have a lot in life that can preoccupy us. We have to be careful that we're not even preoccupied right here. There was one point where <clears throat> Jesus said to his disciples, beware of the leaven of the Pharisees. And they thought he was talking about bread because they'd forgotten to take their lunch with them. <laughs> they were preoccupied with their food. Hope I'm not heading close to home with somebody right here now. All sorts of things. Our worries and our cares. I've, I've been in situations where I've been trying to encourage somebody uh, about overcoming their problems in life. 
And you can see that the worry of it is just so much pounding in their minds, in their thoughts, that they're struggling to get beyond churning over stuff that they're wrestling with. And we need to remember that the Word of God is powerful enough to achieve what He sends it forth to do. Having an awareness. So we need an awareness. And having an expectancy is another one, I believe, that's very important in connection with our faith. And this would apply as to whether we are wanting to, we're in a place where God wants us to minister to somebody else or we're in a place where we need to be ministered to ourselves. Having an awareness and having an expectancy. Seeking to be in tune with him. To touch the master and have him touch you before you came to this place in your home. On the way here, were you coming with expectancy? Were you aware that your prayer is powerful? That as you reach out, and as particularly as we come into this place here this morning, as the team lead us in worship, and we got this opportunity corporately to gather together, that we have the opportunity to touch him, and he can touch us in a, in a powerful way because there's different giftings, there's different abilities that God has invested in people. It's not us, it's him inside of us. We're called to be the glorious church. We're called to encourage one another, to build one another up, to, to edify and exhort and uh, encourage one another. We're here in this earth for the sake of other people. Otherwise, as we've heard many times in the past, we might as well have just been zapped out of here when we were born again. How aware are we? How expectant are we? First Corinthians chapter 3 verse 16 tells us that we are the temple of God. He dwells in this temple. It's not like the Old Testament where God had to come like in an external way to speak to people. Now he speaks right inside of us. God, we worship you this morning. We thank you, Lord, for who you've made us to be. We thank you, Lord, that we're gathered together in your presence. Emmanuel, God with us, revealed in us. Father, forgive us for the times when we've been insensitive, been distracted, been unaware. Our expectation's been low. Lord, we acknowledge you and worship you. We worship you in this holy gathering, Lord. 